Hello and welcome back to SPAN TV and today I want to talk about SHA, Synology High Availability. What that is, is the ability to ensure that your NAS and all of your iSCSI targets and basically all of the files and folders and all the directories that you have can withstand a critical system failure. That's the whole point of SHA. It comes in many forms. They touched on a brand new um, unified controller device at the Synology launch event, that one that's got two controller, two motherboards inside. But in its essence, and probably in its purest form, um, Synology High Availability is when you have two NASes that are exactly the same, and they are working together with a little lifeline between them, and you create a kind of floaty third NAS. And this third NAS with its own identity, IP, whatever, is where all your files are. They, it exists on both of the NASes, or exists in one at least, when you port it over and synchronize the two. And then this device is what all, you'll be accessing all the time. For all of your files, your folders, your clients, all of your projects will be on this floaty NAS. Now this extends all the way up to rack mount devices and desktop devices alike, but you will need to rely on a plus series NAS. Um, so what happens is once you've got this kind of phantom floaty third named NAS, if the hardware in one of the NASes fails, the other one, millisecond time, takes over. And by taking over, I mean it never left. It's the same, you know, kind of philosophy you'd expect with redundant power suppliers or a UPS. It is the ability to have a safety net working in unison with your um, original hardware. So technically, neither one of these devices is the primary. You use one to set up the SHA to synchronize with the other, but then what your primary really is is that floaty third NAS that you are creating. It doesn't combine anything. You will lose, or not lose, but if you fully populated these devices with two TB drives each, you won't be able to add the capacity together. You will only ever get one NAS's worth of hardware and storage. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to set up a Synology high availability situation using two DS918. And then I'm going to show you a way, um, an instance, of what happens when one of the NASes either breaks or the heartbeat breaks. And by heartbeat, that is basically a signal between these two devices that if severed due to a power failure, the device breaking, the cable breaking, network failure, whatever, the other one will make sure your availability to your NAS is sustained. So without further ado, let's make our way to the screen. So straight away, here we have the desktop of our two NASes. Um, from what you could see on the screen earlier on, uh, the one on the left there, we've just called this admin test, and the other one is admin test two. These are two NASes that have got two, um, I, I believe two TB drives in each. Let's double check that storage, shall we, in both of them. Uh, they've both got two drives inside, which will make it nice and easy. Uh, first thing to remember, and um, to my own chagrin, if you will, um, is you cannot use Synology Hybrid RAID currently um, in uh, Synology's high availability operation. You have to use traditional RAIDs. I found that out the hard way when I had set up an SHR by default and I had to revert it to a RAID 1. But again, it's two 4TB drives in each device. There's our drives in there, two 4TBs in there. If we go to the other device, there's our two 4TBs in that one. Remember, these are different devices. You can look at the IP, completely different. That does lead me to my second point. You have to make sure that both devices are using a static IP. That is to say that both of them can't have a dynamic range of IP. And I know I try to steer away from stuff that's too technical on this channel. So in simplistic terms, when most devices, when you set them up by default, it uses something called DHCP. And in the, in the short term, that just means it's a floating point on your network in case things get turned off or other devices get added. And the address of the device can change to be flexible and therefore maintain accessibility. But for Synology High Availability, you have to make sure there is no change. And therefore, your IPs must always be static. So you have to manually set the IP. And that is not as hard as it sounds. You have to make sure DHCP is disabled. And what that means is when you first set up the device, go into these network settings, open them up, click on edit, and from there, just click manual configuration. It will fix the IP it's currently on, so you won't have to assign a new IP, and that will make sure that IP never changes. Another thing is to do with the submask net. Make sure the submask net is the same across the devices. So as you can see, 255 all the way in a zero, you have to make sure that it is the same. 
because if it doesn't, you'll end up with a sub-mask in incompatibility where the devices can't find each other because they are using a different sub-mask net. And that is an alert that I saw way too many times during the setup of this video. So, let's get it started. First thing you wanna do is head over to the package center and make sure you download high availability. Um, if you go into, and you have to make sure it's installed on both devices. So as you can see, I've already installed it on both of these, but I'll show you. Uh, we'll go to the installed area there, and there's our high availability manager there, and on our second device, high availability manager there. We'll carry on there. And if anyone's wondering what that little alert is up there, this is because I sent um, 50 gig of files to this device for this video. We may not need them in the end, and right there, that's just let me know universal search. Um, but for this, we'll just clear the completed items there. What we're going to do now is we're going to open up Synology High Availability on the first NAS. It's going to get rid of that because that's going to get really irritating on screen. And from here, it tells us what we need to do. Now, for the more astute of you, you may have noticed when I, at the beginning of this video, I had two LAN cables connecting both of these devices. They weren't connected to both of them. One just happened to be a LAN cable running in the background to a router I've got wall mounted. But the other one is a LAN cable that connects both of these devices. Now, if we create our high availability cluster, what we need to do is make sure both these devices are connected to the network and make sure both of them have got a spare LAN port to connect with that extra LAN cable. Make sure both of them have got the same version of DSM and make sure that both of them have got the same um, version of that app. When it comes to the high availability cluster, you have to make sure that these LAN cables are correctly assigned. The heartbeat, the heartbeat interface is that LAN cable that we've connected between these two devices. In my case, that has gone into LAN number one. And the other one has to be the one that goes into the network interface to help users access this phantom third NAS that we're creating between these two devices. Moving forward, we can carry on here. And we've assigned our LAN ports to the correct ones. And we're going to let this find the other NAS via the network. And it will establish the heartbeat connection in the background. Next, we have to log into our device. The more astute of you will know exactly what that password is, given it's the same damn one I use in all these videos. And it's asking me the login credentials to get into that second NAS over here. We'll go into that. And as you can see, the second NAS isn't really doing anything. But for this, just to give us an idea of performance, how about if I open up the resource monitor on our second NAS while I'm doing this. Now we have to give a name to our third NAS. This is what we're going to be calling this phantom third NAS that we're setting up. So I'm gonna call it admin test three. Now we have to give it an IP and it has to be an IP within that range. If it's not within that range, it won't work. It has to be in the same shared range and that's the IP range so the, the breadth of the network has to be on the same network as the two NASes. In this case, I'm gonna go for 199, but I can really set it up to anything. Just ensure whichever IP you use, there isn't already something on your network using that IP. If there's any problems, it will alert you or not let you proceed. So if we do that, it will go red and tell us the IP range isn't valid. Same thing goes with the name. You can't give it the name of something that already exists because IP, I'm sorry, admin test two is already in use. So again, IP test three, even, 36, and then we can move forward. And there we are. Now it's going to check that um, the credentials are all correct for our Synology high availability setup. It's checking the system information to make sure they're the same, because you have to have two identical NASs for high availability because they have to be matched at all times. The volume, you have to make sure it's the same amount of storage space and kind of RAID. Network service is to ensure that both of the devices are on the same network. Network setup is pretty much the same thing, but just verifying those LAN connections. And finally, heartbeat interface is just verifying that the heartbeat connection between these two devices, that lifeline, is still active. The more astute, once again, will look at the network there and see that big spike where the two devices have communicated. Moving forward, here comes an interesting point. Um, now, with the original NAS that I would use to set up this device, admin test one, the one on the left here, I used, I chucked on 50 gig of data. I didn't know before starting this video that with Synology High Availability, you actually have two options going forward. 
you can choose to completely erase all data on the original NAS to, so it's a lot quicker. So rather than trying to do a block by block um, copy of all of that data from the first NAS onto the second, so the Phantom third NAS has all of the data, you can actually just completely start afresh and delete all of that data if you so choose. Now, what I'm going to do, for the sake of accessing the data, and this might add extra time to the video, I'm going to click keep all of my data. So it's still gonna to have to send 50 gig of data to the other NAS. Um, so let's move forward and see what happens. Now it's just gonna confirm the amount of data we're sending through and confirming that, that all the credentials and stuff we've used so far are correct. Now it's just gonna ask us to confirm what we're doing. We're just gonna go, yep, yeah, go for it. Because remember, this will pretty much wipe any data you had on that second NAS. And now it's just gonna verify that this synchronization can take place. As you can see now, that second NAS is now being reconfigured, hence why we've now lost it on the network. Whereas the primary NAS is now beginning the setup and full completion of our Synology hybrid um, a Synology high availability setup. Because remember, the IP on the top left here, that IP is going to not exist either. Both of these IPs are now going to be wrong. And the IP that's going to be correct, correct is that one that we've created earlier on, that new IP ending in 199, and admin test number three as the device's name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly disappear because I'm sure this is going to take a fair old whack of time and hopefully rejoin you once the installation and setup of this high availability server is complete. Okay, we're on to the final step there. We're rebooting the passive server, and this will hopefully start the whole process over again, but this time we've got our new Synology high availability server up and running. Okay then, so we've heard another beep, and both devices are now completely up and running. So. We've got admin test one, we've got admin test two, which no longer exists. Let's have a look at what happens if we look at that IP from earlier. And here it is, admin test three, our new phantom NAS. Let's log in, and once again, it will still use all the login credentials as the previous first NAS that we created. What we'll do is we're gonna remove now this, we're just gonna scale over here. And here is our access to our new Synology high availability NAS. It's currently sending files over between them. Remember, we put about I put about 50 gig inside here. So right now it's just giving us the utilization of both of these devices, what's being used to transfer speed between them. And what this is gonna do right now is it's still sending data and synchronizes, synchronizing between our two, uh, two NASs. I believe it's trying to do the automated pop-up for us, but we're just gonna go back to what we were looking at before. And we're just gonna leave it now to completely synchronize, and then we'll move on to the last part of today's video where we're gonna muck around and try to see if we can knacker one of these two NASs. While we wait for the synchronization to complete, it's worth taking a look at the user interface of a high availability manager. Obviously from here we can see these two devices and how they're synchronizing right now, which one's classed as the active or the passive, but really it doesn't matter which one, if there was a breakdown, because it will always be accessible. We can see the transfer speed between them as well as the latency, uh, so in other words, that's a speed with which uh, data is being handled between them, and you want that number as small as possible, because it's in milliseconds. Um, there's obviously recorded events and alerts, stuff that's going on with the device, and it's gonna talk about the utilization of different hardware within the device. Now, disk activity is obviously going to be higher on the passive device, because that's where we're writing all of that data to. Whereas on the original NAS, that primary one, which has got 50 gig of data, we can see that the disk activity is gonna be less, because that's reading, and reading utilizes less hardware abilities than writing and the creating of data. We carry on, we can learn more about these two devices, their ambient temperature, their firmware, and more. And moving forward, we can learn more about the network interfaces of the individual devices, or that secret third NAS we've created, otherwise known as the cluster. We can initiate different services, and you can run the whole operation from this user interface pretty easily. 
Right now, it's still carrying that data. It's replicating the data from the primary NAS and carrying that over to the other NAS. But again, this isn't going to be the quickest um, system. We could have gone for a blank test and let it uh, write and delete all the data. But I think it's probably better that we show you that even if you do already have one NAS in play, you don't have to format your drives in order to, to create a Synology high availability situation.